In this video, I would like to use the animation from FET, the University of Colorado's Physics Department, to explain a little bit about motion graphs. And I want to examine two situations. Situation one, where a person or an object is moving at a constant velocity, and secondly, where the object is moving at a constant acceleration. So in the first situation, we have a little man over here next to a brick wall, and he is going to move across the screen until he hits that other brick wall. We've started him at the negative 10 position, the zero is actually in the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to set him up with a particular velocity. In this case, we're going to set him up with a particular velocity at 5 meters per second. We're going to make his acceleration zero, and then we're going to press play and see what happens to the guy. Okay, so what's it showing? Well, first of all, the first thing you should notice is that the guy is moving at a constant rate. That's what constant velocity means. So how would this play in a graph? Well, as time goes on, his displacement or his distance that he travels is changing at the exact same value. So from in this second over here, there's one second there, he's moved five meters. In this second, he's moved five meters. In this second, he's moved five meters. And of course, he has moved five meters. It's at a constant rate. So if you were to graph that, you'd get a slope, a straight line. It shows a straight line, show that something is changing at a constant rate. With a velocity time graph, of course, we have a straight line that is horizontal. Of course, we're ignoring him when he crashes into the wall. So what would you expect? Well, he's always traveling at five meters per second, so we have a horizontal line. Because he's not speeding up or slowing down or changing direction, we, his acceleration is zero. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if the velocity doesn't change, acceleration is zero. And so we expect it to be zero throughout the whole situation here. So that describes the graphs. But we can also, can we extract some of that information from the graphs? Well, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Rate of change of displacement is literally displacement divided by time. Well, hey presto, the change of displacement is the y-axis. The change of time is the x-axis. So the slope of the line, the rise over run, gives you the velocity. So measure this slope, in this case, clearly 10 divided by five, sorry, 10 divided by um, two or one second there, uh, two seconds there, we get five meters per second. Of course here it's five meters per second. But the other thing we can work out from the velocity time graph is the displacement. So previously we can work out the velocity from a displacement time graph, we can work out the displacement from a velocity time graph. How might you say? Well, what is the area here? Well, the area here is this length multiplied by this length, but that happens to be the displacement. So, so, sorry, velocity. So we have velocity, which is five meters per second, and here we have time, which is four seconds. And so clearly what we have is five times uh, four, we get 20 meters. Well, that's what the guide ran. He went from over here to over here, he walked 20 meters. So that explains the guy going at a constant velocity. So let's reset this. So here we now have it completely reset. So let's now put it in a new situation and let's start him in this position and we'll start him off at a zero velocity, but we will give him an acceleration of let's say one meter per second. What will happen? Well, let's play, let's play and see what happens. So, what was happening? Well, let's talk about the acceleration first. We gave it at one meters per second squared acceleration. That hasn't changed. It's constant throughout. In this case, we clearly see a velocity that is increasing, but acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So in other words, at one meters per second squared, his velocity is increasing by one meters per second every second. 
So if we look at the graph, we can see at this stage, after two seconds, he has already reached roughly two meters per second. Two divided by two is one meters per second squared. In this section here, again, he's only increased two meters per second in its velocity over the space of two seconds. And similarly here, in other words, he's moving at a constant acceleration his velocity is increasing at a constant rate. What about the displacement time graph? Well, of course, he's traveling slowly here, so the displacement will be initially small. But as his speed increases, his displacement increases with every passing second. And as a result, the slope is increasing. Well, that's inconsistent with what I said before. If a slope of a displacement time graph gives you velocity, then you would expect that as the velocity increases, the slope increases, which it clearly does. So what can we determine from this graph as well as we did previously? Well, I said to you, the area under the graph gives you the displacement. Well, in this case, the area here is a triangle. We're only interested up until this point when he crashed a little bit after here. And so if you were to work out what his displacement was, you can clearly see this reads uh, approximately a total of um, six meters per second over here. That's his velocity. You multiply that by the time. In this case, the time is around um, six, but it's a little bit more than six. It's about um, six and a half seconds, but the area is a triangle. So you have to divide that by two. So what you end up getting here is a value of 40 divided by 2, giving you 20, which is what the guy actually moved. I hope that gives you a little bit of a better understanding of motion graphs.